Uh, but if you pass in a image that is just a color uh, as your style only, you can actually drive a pretty significant change in the color palette of the output image, uh, which is really, really cool. All right, so uh, when we had the studio session last week, Evan, uh, there was a critical error that occurred, which was I did not record my audio correctly. Uh, I take no blame myself. I put all of the blame on the recording software. However, uh, since we of didn't record, <laughs> since we didn't record it, uh, we felt compelled because the session was so good, so well attended, and we had so much fun doing it. Uh, we also learned a lot of cool things about the image uh, prompt style only and composition only tooling. We decided to record this video after the fact, review some of the stuff that we covered in that uh, session and also maybe generate a couple new images and kind of showcase the feature. Is that the right, is that the right uh, takeaway? This is great. So everyone who couldn't attend the hour long live stream will get all of the lessons and cool things that we learned in a much shorter period of time. That's right, we're gonna this keep it short. We're gonna keep it short. It's not gonna be the full session, but if you, if you missed out, uh, we will definitely continue doing sessions and we'll try to make sure that you get all the takeaways from what we uh, learned on the a session we've got the whole gallery here we'll do a quick review and then we'll generate some things can you explain a bit about what just style only ip adapter is i think it's helpful for it's people good. who've it's good. used ip adapter before uh, we know that it can control for composition it can control for style from my understanding we can now divide those correct yeah it's a good good way to think about it so i would say there's actually three parts so we've got the content the semantic content of the thing which is like there is a dog apparently being chased by a ball right uh so that's the content the composition is there's a dog here there's a ball here just kind of like general structure uh, and then there's the style component with the new style only method you can change the ip adapter to that style only uh kind of approach. And what that means is it kind of like ignores a lot of the uh, content that would come through from the actual image itself. So the dog, the ball, uh, really just looks at the style of the overall thing. And similarly, the composition only uh, generally just sees that there's a thing here and a thing here. Um, and kind of, we kind of talked through a little bit of what that might do to your images on the studio session and kind of how, um, you know, if you've got two people standing there the composition is two people kind of in those places in the image but you might have a completely different set of characters a completely different style that's kind of what the composition only is um and then of course if you use the full you're passing in everything you're passing in the uh style the composition and some of the semantic content of like what's in the picture dog ball uh tree whatever is in in the actual image itself um, now, we also talked a little bit about how the IP adapter models, IP adapter SDXL plus, uh, this works with SD 1.5 as well. If you're using the uh, basic one, the basic IP adapter, it'll kind of have a lighter effect than if you use the IP adapter plus. That carries through with the style as well. The plus is going to really you know, hammer home that style or composition when you're using those methods. Um, so we'll do full, and we're going to bring this weight down to 0.5, because if I do one, it's just going to override anything. All right, so this is full. Remember, this is full, not style only. This is what happens when you have a full uh, image prompt. So we, got, we got an astronaut, and we got a bunch of roses kind of exploding behind the astronaut. Okay, so now let's take a look and see what style only does. Uh, and we'll leave it at 0.5. Uh, but I'll also add one to the queue that's like a little bit higher, maybe like 0.9, and we'll kind of see the difference there between the range of style adapter uh, or, or style only IP adapter. So this is 0.5. Uh, you can see we've got like the blue light in the background. We have a nice like orangish glow on these uh, flowers. Mm -hmm. 
uh, we got the style or kind of the vibes, but we didn't get any of the content. No astronauts in this one, right? Uh, similarly, if we look at that higher 0.9 style only, uh, we've got uh, a little bit more of this kind of like space looking glow. You know, we've got this um, back glow on the right, almost like taking some of that explosion. We've got some of that kind of space atmosphere over on the left, even though this is just in apparently some room. Um, so you can see it's pulling a lot of the aesthetic elements out and using that in the image, uh, but allowing you to really control the content of the image using your text prompt. Pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. So this is pretty, this is a pretty useful tool, pretty straightforward way of using it. And in the session on Friday, we also did some more experimental uses of this. Maybe let's this, so this is kind of an obvious one. Yeah. Let's let's show some of the cool use cases that we uncovered. Yeah, so I'll touch on a couple of the big takeaways um, that we covered during the session. Um, you know, I we did this black cat. This was kind of the neo-noir. This was the rusted watering can, right? And I think the, the thing that I highlighted is that when you're pulling out style, um, it is going to take uh, elements of like, what medium it's in as well. So if you have this kind of vectorized neo noir type look, uh, you know we're going to get some of that vectorized illustrative style in this. If we take this like real photography of a watering can, rusted watering can, we get a lot of that coloration, but it also is realistic. You know this cat looks more uh, real than this one, for example. So we kind of played around with that and saw all of the different elements and ways that this could be interpreted. Um, obviously, this cat ended up with like a weird tail. Um, but then we applied, you know, all the styles throughout and kind of saw, you know, monkeys. One takeaway from the monkey here uh, was that when you use that style only on the uh, watering can, you can actually get kind of elements of metal and the metal is, it's trying to like reconcile, how do I put metal on it, monkey? How do I get that texture? Um, and this, in this case, you know, it kind of makes it look like he's got a little bit of a suit of armor. And we talked a little bit about how, uh, you know, the way the AI works, it's gonna try to make it make sense. So how do I give this monkey, you know, more of this kind of look? Um, and then obviously we gave it another way it could interpret that, which was a robotic monkey, you know, we went down that rabbit hole. So uh, a lot of this is kind of figuring out how it's going to interpret the different things that you're putting out. Uh, I'll kind of skip through some of this stuff, because I think this is all variations on um, style only, except maybe for this one here. Uh, we, for this, we we're doing composition only. If you'll remember back to this initial image here, we had this kind of like composition of this cyberpunk retro wave scene. Uh, when you use that at varying strengths for the composition of the vase of roses, you get you know, kind of different elements of how that could be interpreted from a composition perspective. And this is similar to control net, but it's give it's it's not following the outlines of it. It's kind of a more uh, loose interpretation of composition as, as far as I understand it, correct? Yeah, yeah. So control net's going to be when you really, really want specific composition of like, you know, this is structurally where things are and I want you to deviate, you know, no, no less than this amount. Uh, when you're using composition only, it is much more interpretive, right? It's, it's less about like uh, the line must exactly fit this pixel space and a lot more of like compositionally in, in a semantic sense, if we're going to describe where things might be in the picture, how would we kind of like articulate that, or at least how would, how would the AI model interpret that for itself, right? And it's kind of like passing that through an image encoder and then really kind of using that compositional description that it's giving itself to figure out where things ought to be. Um, what that does is it obviously gives you a much more flexible composition control that can map itself more to the text description, but it is obviously less controlled in the sense that you have, um, you're not spe specifying where exactly in the image certain elements are. Uh, so it's good for kind of general, I, I would say like a way of articulating a composition using an image rather than text is probably the best way that I would describe that when you're trying to input that. Now we get to some fun stuff that we talked through. Um, when you're using the style only IP adapter, 
uh, if you pass it, and this was discovered on the session, so this discovery happened as part of the community, so that's really cool. I actually think it was you that came up with this. Uh, but if you pass in a image that is just a color uh, as your style only, you can actually drive a pretty significant change in the color palette of the output image, uh, which is really, really cool. Uh, and we tried this out with a couple of different inputs and kind of got different uh styles out um somebody gave us a kind of more varied color palette and we got this uh kind of more varied one here when we had it very very high and described a forest uh you know it, it obviously turned it almost vectorized and so we kind of brought the strength down a little bit and kind of played around with that and we showcased that you can really drive a lot of the uh coloring of an image obviously going to want to like tweak the strength to get it to the right like mix of color and how it's driving it forward because if you if it's too yeah. low you're going to end up with like a hint of that lighting whereas like you know you've got it why don't we show one of the examples with that um with the yellow and blue why thing. don't why don't we just create a new one because i think we did this on yeah, let's, let's we, did, we did this on the, the call so i'm going to send this to the canvas okay. just so we've got you know kind of a, a base to start with but let's say i wanted to mix this up all I'm doing is I'm picking colors. I'm going to maybe pick, uh, I'll pick like a seafoam greenish kind of thing. Uh, maybe we'll change, change this pink to like an orange. Okay. So I created kind of, I'm just creating like a mini color palette. You can do this a couple of different ways. You can go to a website, get a color palette downloaded. I mean, this is really just like putting colors in an image. Um, you're going to obviously do whatever you want. Uh, but we'll save this out uh, and that will save itself to our gallery. And we'll go back and we'll put that in our style only. Um, and I'll, we'll, we'll play around and see what happens when we do plus and when we do just the normal IP adapter because I think that'll be good. Um, should we do the vase of roses or should we try something else? Try it again? Yeah. Uh, we can do the vase of roses or we could do something like nature related as well. Uh, we'll, we'll do, um, okay, how about this? We'll do a uh, a cactus in the desert and we'll leave roses in there, right? Because, you know, okay. you know that'll be sure. fine. Desert rose. Uh, desert rose. All right, so we'll do 0.9 style only for a cactus in the desert. Uh, we'll do one at 0.5 and then I'll also do uh, just a regular IP adapter and look at those strengths as well. So we can kind of see that. So IP adapter plus with that style, super strong, right? And it overwhelms, it becomes kind of like a suggestion of the shape or uh, uh, the vectorization of that uh, color. When we bring it down, IP adapter plus is uh, shoving it still into kind of this more like flat illustrative uh, vibe, right? So it, kind of looks like a cactus in front of a, a painting. When we bring that back down to the regular IP adapter though, um, it's not shoving in the, the, the style of like flat color as much. And it's much more suggesting just like the, the colors itself. Uh, that was the lower strength one. This is kind of our higher strength one. Um, and we can kind of play around with this to figure out where, where we want it to get to so that we're like just right. Uh, Cause this is obviously a little bit too still too vectorized so we'll just play around with like 0.65 and 0.65 gives us that's a good lesson it, kind of, it depends what what you're trying to get but playing with the, the different model playing with the weight can have pretty dramatic impacts here yeah. but all in all of them it's pulling in the exact those exact colors which is very cool because i think Previously, it's been difficult to get, like, if you have a specific hex code color yeah. that you're trying to get incorporated in, yeah. you know, you can try and text prompt for, you know, our invoke yellow highlighter green, but is, is it going to be the exact? Uh, usually that's, it's not going to be unless it's referenced be, you know, strongly to a, a, a text word. Um, so I think this is a great way of, yeah, if you have a color palette or, or are trying to get a specific color incorporated into it, does it pretty well. Yeah, I mean, it's it's super cool to play around with. And, um, you know, let's just use this same prompt. And this can we'll be combined, this this, can be combined uh, with other adapters as well. So yeah, you can do control net. You can do um, any number of IP adapter uh, combinations. Like you could do another 
um, due to a compositional layer or something like that. So we pulled in the blue, the, the pink, and the yellow uh, just to compare it with this kind of more orange, blue, green. And you can see we kind of got that like, you know, desert sunset in the background uh, has a super cool look, right? Very cool. All right. Well, uh, thanks for joining me, Devin, on this like recap of the studio session. Thank you for recapping for everyone. Yeah, it's, you bet. it's too cool to let to let <laughs> just die with a uh, soundless video. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, cool. Well, join us for the next studio session if you missed it. Uh, and hopefully this was helpful recap for you. We'll see you next time.